as we will discuss it a little bit in lab and use a fast Fourier transform in lab view. Uh, but this is uh, this demo gives a good example of using both. Uh, here we have an input sine wave in uh, red, which has an amplitude of 10 and an input frequency of 100 hertz. And over here we can set the sampling rate. Right now we're sampling at 75 hertz, and we're only going to take 10 samples. So you probably count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. There's our 10 samples. Uh, and like uh, as shown in the LabVIEW video, we're taking the same measurements. Um, this uh, repeated sawtooth wave doesn't really capture the true input wave. And in fact, its wave, if we were to fit a sine wave through here, uh, the best sine wave would probably be um, uh, shown here in this FFT plot. What an FFT is, is it, it demonstrates or uh, it tries to fit a series of sine waves into uh, measured data and an output saying um, your uh, best fit is going to be uh, these peaks at these frequencies and amplitudes. For example, uh, the highest peak is about 7.5 amplitude at a frequency of about 22.5. So our best guess, the frequency of this wave is <clears throat> 22.5 hertz. Um, there's also, to get a better fit, these uh, four other waves, uh, thinking that if you add a sine wave of 7.5 amplitude at 22.5 hertz with a sine wave of amplitude 5.25 and an amplitude, uh, frequency of 30 and so forth with these other signals, we would get a better fit to uh, fit these data points. Um, you can see we know the real frequency is 100 Hz and it's nowhere on this plot. And a fast Fourier transform, really, it can only detect frequencies up to half of the sampling frequency. So we're sampling at 75, best it can do is um, 37.5. So 100 Hz isn't even on this range. <clears throat> Again, Nyquist frequency is uh, 200. I'm going to show you what if we got close to that. Let's say we go to 175 Hz. Well, now we're still not capturing very well the input wave and our fast Fourier transform thinks, well, our best guess is an amplitude of 8 with a frequency of 70 hertz. You know that's not right, um, but this is what aliasing does. It gives us a best guess, and that's all we know. Uh, we could keep increasing this and changing it. Let's say we just happen to pick 225. Now we're starting to see... Um, well, our best guess is somewhere around here at 110, and the next guess is 90. Uh, but our real input frequency is 100. We're really not capturing that quite yet. Now, although we are above the Nyquist frequency, um, we're still it's we still need to go a little bit higher if we really want to capture everything. Uh, because I mean, we're in the ballpark. This is a lot better than the 22.5 before that we were estimating. Right now, we're at least in the ballpark around 100 hertz. Uh, but if we go even higher, let's try 300. Now we're starting to see our peaks are gathering around the true frequency of 100 hertz. If we go even higher, let's see 500. Now we get one solid peak at 100 hertz, telling us we've captured this wave. We believe it's only one sine wave at a frequency of 100 hertz. And if we keep going even higher, oops, excuse me. A thousand. You see again between a possible range of frequencies from 0 to 500, which is half of our sampling frequency, best guess is an amplitude of 10 at a frequency of 100 hertz. And right now we're seeing we're, we're definitely capturing our, uh, our input frequency. And so this is what a fast Fourier transform looks like. We can make it a little better. Let's go back down to 225 samples. Again, eh, not getting that 100 very well. But we could improve it if we take a lot more data. Let's say instead of taking 10, we're going to take 100 samples. Now you can see we have more waves to deal with and uh, a finer resolution here. You can see our peaks are trying to tell us we're somewhere around 100. If we can go even higher, let's say 200, get even a, a better approximation of our sample at an amplitude of 10 frequency of one.
100. See, we didn't have to. We're still above the Nyquist frequency. We didn't have to go all the way to 1,000 to get this. But it's not a perfect fit. We still got all this kind of noise here that's not really working out. It's capturing some stuff that doesn't exist. Let's try going to 500 samples. Really slow, but again, capturing our peak a little bit better. Um, still telling us it's about 100 hertz. Wow. Um, but again, still not as good as if we just simply sampled faster. So, sample, if you want to really want to get the amplitude, um, best thing is to go probably 10 times faster than your input frequency. Um, and you don't really need that many samples to capture it. Um, but uh, the more samples and the faster the frequency, the better you'll get it. Now again, you be careful, don't just crank up all the numbers as fast as possible. As you can see here, if I say several thousand hertz, we get 5,000 samples. That just means it takes longer to collect my data. I wouldn't want to make this a ridiculous number and collect 50,000 samples because it's going to take me 50 seconds to measure that. I don't want to wait that long. So I hope this helps a little bit seeing um, a little bit more about what aliasing does, but also how you can see aliasing the fast Fourier transform. Here we're capturing that one input frequency uh, very well, whereas before uh, we get a little bit of noise here if we don't uh, go too far above the aliasing frequency. Now in real life, samples are not perfect sine waves, and so you will always get some sort of scatter and some sort of uh, uh, various frequencies showing up, but what you generally look for is that peak frequency to try to tell you what the dominant frequency and dominant wave of that input signal looks like. Thank you.